This is going to be part one of the series of uh, tutorials to help you complete project uh, McGraw-Hill SimNet Excel Chapter 4 Guided Project 4-3. And just like all the other projects that we have, it starts with downloading some files, in this case, three of them, a start file, which is, you know, the one that, you know, the one that you actually work on, resources, which is a, let me download it so you can see, the resources file is a file with the extension S, uh, CSV. And this is a format for importing data from the outside, like universal format. And of course, the solution file, which is um, the example of what it would look like when it's done as a PDF. So let's get started. I have already the start file open in Excel. And let's look at the first instructions. I'm going to, even though I'm doing this on Mac, I'm going to look at the instructions for Windows just to highlight if there's ever any differences between them. And I don't think there's too many differences or close to none on this project. Uh, step number one is, as always, to open it. Uh, and if it opens in protected view, which is usually, which it usually does in Windows, uh, you enable editing. And if your instructor tells you to change its name, you change its name. So here it is. It's open, it has my name in it, and it's, I don't, I'm not going to change its name. Um, then they're asking us to do something we already did with a little uh, difference, with a little twist, to copy a, um, a whole worksheet, or in this case, we're actually duplicating it. We're copying a worksheet called Patients and Equipment, and we're placing it before the criteria sheet, and we're going to call it Advanced Filter. I'm going to already copy the words advanced filter so they're ready to be pasted now what are they talking about to um, copy and place it before the criteria sheet so in the excel uh, workbook there's already three worksheets one of them is called patients and equipment and i'm right clicking on it and i'm going to move or copy now since they're not saying to copy it to another workbook it's the same workbook before they want it to be before criteria and they deliberately say a copy because if i don't uh, check copy it'll move it i don't want to move it i want to create a copy so i check create a copy and i click ok and it named it patient and equipment too but they want to give it that name advanced filter i'm just making sure that it has no other characters good and i'm clicking outside and it takes the name advanced filter that's because they want to keep this workbook intact and then mess around, do all kinds of things with a duplicate of it. Um, just a heads up, what they call it advanced filter. Look, here in the patients and equipment, it's a really, really long list. I think you'd agree with me that although it's very accurate, it's also very hard to like do anything with. It's just a raw list of data. Data becomes useful when we start filtering it, when we go, okay, give me everything that was done on November two, uh, 2018. Give me everything that belongs to MRI in descending order. Give me the department that had the most patients in June 2019. That's filtering. And by the way, this is what turns data into information. That's the very definition. Data is just the wrong number. Information is data with some meaning to it. And that's exactly what we're going to do in this entire project. Um, so in order to do that, we're going to select cell A5 in this new uh, worksheet that we created, advanced filter, and click the format as table button, which is found on the home tab styles group. Now, why do we need to format it as table? Well, first of all, let's do it. A5 in advanced filter, make sure it is advanced filter. A5 is simply the top left um, cell in this table and under home, there's format as table right here. And we want they want us to choose the style, white table style, light one. White table style, light one. Uh, yep, yeah. white table style, light one. Let's see. Format as table and 
white table style light one it happens to be the very first one click um they're telling you to notice that it's asking you confirm that the range is a4 d60 and what are all those dollars as we learned this means absolute it means this will never move always a always four always d always 60 because that's the range of the data uh, and that my table has header box uh, my uh, table has header box is selected now why because we clicked on the first data but there's also headers here so a4 d60 this is where the data is it tells it that above it there's headers you know the words month year image type and so on and we're going to click ok before we click anywhere else and it formatted this whole thing as a table now you might think why do we need it to be a table the whole worksheet is a table think of it as like a fencing in like an island within it that we can treat as its own little area notice also that as soon as we gave it um as soon as we defined it as a table we get these little arrows where we can start you know sorting and so on this should be familiar to you from like you know e-commerce or amazon or whatever where you get like a ton of results you go oh please sort them you know by price uh going you know or alphabetically from a to z or whatever this is what formatting it as a, t as a table allows us to do save So we did this, we did this, we confirmed, uh, create a table and select D59. Rows 61 through 73 were not included in the table format, the source data from multiple files, um, and not all rows were recognized. So when we created this table, it recognized all the way to 59, but see how it stops at 59? For some reason, it's because, you know, uh, it was too big or because data came from different sources, like here, data came from different sources. It should have included all the way to 73, but it included only all the way up to 60. So they're asking us to select, what is it, uh, D um, D59. In other words, like the last cell that was recognized d15 let me zoom in so we can see it d59 and the way we extend it is point to the resize table handle at the bottom right corner of cell um, d60 so sorry create a table select d59 the source data okay point to the resized uh, uh, handle at the bottom right of d60 because that's really where the table ends and drag the pointer all the way to d73 so d60 has right here a handle and i'm going to drag it all the way down to 73 and you, i can tell that it's now included in the table because i get those banded rows so again i'll undo even though d59 was the one that selected the handle was on d60 drag it down let go save the next step so we did this we did this is to select cell a5 click the table name box and they want this table to be called tbl filter the table name is found let me copy this uh, under the tab table design tab properties group and it's actually uh, very close to the left so a5 the very first uh, piece of data and under the table tab here's the name of the table and i'm going to call it tbl filter with a capital f because that's what they want now why do tables need names because one worksheet might have a couple of tables and we need to tell them apart so if i press enter and i click away from it and then i click somewhere within it it knows that that's the name of the table and that concludes step number three step number four has three sub steps a b c create an output range for the advanced filter um, output range means that this is the range that it will output data from it's like you know look from here to here select cells 
a4 d4 and copy and paste them to cell g4 so a4 d4 which are these guys copy paste them to g4 what are we doing here g4 paste it copied these four cells it pasted them why do we need them twice because now here we're going to have the filtered information we're going to see are we on the right uh, yep we are here is where we go like okay give it to me by department give it to me you know so we still have the raw data here and the filtered data here save now obviously this looks a little weird so the next step um, is to type extract range in cell g3 it's like a header above them and set the font size to 14 point italic so right here in g3 i'm going to type extract range i'm going to select it and set the font size to 14 and make it italic so you see it's like you know it meshes with the, the style that's above these guys and this is like the header for this table adjust column widths for columns g through j so that each label displays on a single line you see it's a little cramped right now right here so what i'm going to do is make this a little wider so it displays on a single line and this a little wider they're not telling you exactly by how much but as long as it displays on a single line and especially this one because it's longer and now all those columns are displayed on a single line um this concludes step number four and i will meet you in step number five in part number two of this series of tutorials